Who's hiding? Hey there! So I just wanted to show you really quick how to fix a hose, just in case any of you out there don't know that you can fix them. They actually have these cool things called hose menders. So if you end up with an issue like I have here with one of my hoses where it actually broke and then it spews water, I call this a multitasking hose because now it not only waters this way, it also waters that way, so I water two things at once. No. But the better way to do it is just to fix it, and it's really, really, really super easy to do. So if it broke over here, um, where you actually connect your hose sprayer or whatever, your spray head, that is the male side, and then if, you, if it broke over by where the hose bib is, of course, that's the female side. So make sure you get the right one, male or female, and a standard size hose is 5 eighths, so that's what they usually sell. So the first thing you want to do is you want to cut it off behind where the part that's broken is because we're essentially going to replace this thing with the new one and then we're going to cut off this bad section. So I'm just going to take some scissors here or you know you could use some pruning shears or something else. Cut it off and then we discard that part. So we're going to cut open the packaging here. And then this thing is actually really, really easy to put together. You basically take this and then you stick your hose on this portion of it right here, but you wanna make sure this is on there first because when you stick this on, you're basically going to connect it with this screw thing and then it's gonna hold it in place. So shove it as hard as you can, as much as your hose and your strength will let you until it's to the end and then you reconnect this and as you're doing it, it compresses it down on the hose, making a nice tight connection. If you can't get this with your hands all the way to the end, I have also used tools. So there we go. Now it's as tight as it can get and now you just put on your hose sprayer just like normal and now you don't have a multitasking hose, you have a fixed hose. And instead of having to pay for a whole new hose, which could be, who knows, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 dollars, depending on how expensive your hose is, you fixed it for just two bucks. So there you go, how to fix a hose for cheap. Hey you guys, you wanna go hiking with our family? So in case you don't get to hike much, you know here in Colorado, we'll take you along with our family. So here's the trail we have ahead of us. It goes up over that ridge and to the other side. And this trail is pretty famous for having things like deer and rabbits and birds and badgers and all kinds of things and even rattlesnakes. So I guess we'll see what we see. Prairie Dog City. And evidence of the horses, since horses are common here. <laughs> Our little prairie dogs. I think they're so cute. Oh, are you looking at me? <laughs> this is a big beetle. <laughs> He's in a hurry. Yeah, he needs to go somewhere, I'm telling you. Not even the least bit afraid. <laughs> the little cabin thing, all of the planes. Of course, you could see some city way back in the background. Very peaceful. No trains, no airplanes, no cars, no cars just nature. Water. <laughs> Get your head wet. Ah, oh, stick it in there. Nope. Stick your head in. <laughs> Don't drink it. Yeah. <laughs> I could. I bet that was refreshing. Yes. As peaceful as it is out here. It is a little nerve-wracking knowing that in any of this grass, at any point, there could be a rattlesnake hiding. Look how pretty it is. Peaceful. And the female.
Oh, that's that first male we saw with the little antlers. Down the hill and off in the distance. That's where we're parked. Almost over. No, the other way. <laughs> Amazed at how green they are out here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they are really slow moving. Crossing. Oh, okay. yeah. You think he's probably what, a six footer? Did you see some deer? Did you see them? Yeah. There was a ton. No, I didn't see them. I've seen them on the other side of this valley recently, but they were pretty close. I think we saw like what, yeah. four or five females and a couple males. Well, that was fun. Got to see pretty much everything I expected to see. And yes, we were even delayed by a rattlesnake who wanted to hang out on the side and then eventually cross the trail, the road. So, thanks for coming along with our family hiking friends. That was fun. We got to go to the pool. We're free! Woohoo! Handstand! Go! <laughs> and what summer vlog would be complete without a garden update? So, we have been getting tons and tons of squashes actually. We've been picking some out, you know, every few days seems like. And this early straight neck is the one that seemed to produce the fastest and is the most consistent. So definitely I would recommend that one. The very first zucchini we got for the year is uh, from a plant that was called black zucchini. I grew four different types of zucchini. Black zucchini, dark green, ford hook, and then a yellow zucchini. Which is the same shape but it's yellow like this. And the black zucchini was by far the first to produce. And then of course the cucumbers where... The National Pickling seemed to be the one that grew the first cucumbers as well, and I grew several different varieties of cucumbers as well. And of course, mid-July is the time when you harvest garlic, so that's been pulled out and been replaced with bush beans. The winter squashes are climbing up the tripod trellises. You gotta be careful though because you do have to keep up on them, otherwise they start going crazy and getting out of hand. These winter squashes are starting to grow too. The summer squashes are producing lots and lots of squash. The green beans are producing beans. My little mini peppers I was telling you about are producing little mini peppers. The cucumbers and the dill have both been growing very well. The basil has all grown and it's filled in bushy-like instead of it just being one tall plant. Like I mentioned, if you pinch it, it gets many branches and so that's what it looks like. It's much more bushy. However, it is producing some seeds and some flowers, but I haven't noticed any kind of a change to, to basil's flavor. I know a lot of other things when they bolt and flower, the, the flavor changes, but I really haven't noticed that with basil. What about everyone else? Is my palate just not sophisticated enough to notice the difference, or does it really not change in flavor? Let me know what you think. Spiders are helpful to the garden. They eat the insects, so definitely want to keep them there. They, they count as beneficial for sure. The tomatoes have grown all big and bushy and they're as tall as my 10 year old. The tomatoes have been ripening and we've been picking them so that we don't have to buy them from the grocery store anymore. The apricots on our apricot tree have grown and gotten lots bigger. And some are even starting to turn orange so I'm pretty sure we'll be picking them soon. A while back we picked all the cherries off of this cherry tree. This apple tree is loaded with apples. The grapevines have clusters of grapes. And lastly, the peach tree has bunches of peaches that haven't quite grown big enough, but we're hoping they'll grow bigger and ripen here soon. So thanks for watching this vlog and garden update. We'll see you next time.